I'm Rob Lucuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby here with Catherine Bostick, composer on ABC's limited series, Women of the Movement. Catherine, this series is based on the true story of Maybe Till Mowgli, who in 1955 risked her life, really, to find justice after her son Emmett was brutally murdered in the Jim Crow South. What did it mean to you personally to be part of a team that you know, is shining a spotlight on her story? It meant a great deal to be a part of this team and this endeavor because we are actually seeing, we're at a tipping point yet again in this country of issues that deal with racial discrimination and um, intentional voter suppression that is based on a similar theme. And so this movie, I feel, this series rather, I, I feel is timely and uh, vastly important. And also the legacy that Mamie and Emmett Till have left in so far as shining this kind of spotlight and forcing us to really have a much deeper, not only conversation, but act, call, to, call to action, call to arms about this is extremely important now. So I'm, I'm delighted to be a part of that type of activism. Yeah, um, you know, I uh, wasn't completely familiar with her story, to be honest. I'm so glad that this series was made so that we can really honour her legacy, because I think these are the stories that we need to hear more of. And when it comes time to people like yourself, the composer, um, you know, I think it's your primary job is, you know, to, to really key into the emotion. And that's, you know, the... TV and film composers are so good at making us feel, uh, whether that be excitement, tension, sadness, whatever. Um, do you agree that the composer's primary job is to tap into the emotion of the scene with just the right melody or the right cue? Oh, absolutely. It's really crucial to be able to have that kind of visceral trigger so that you are not necessarily, you know, leading with too much e emotional signaling, but just enough that is going to tap into a conscious and subconscious feeling and response. So I, I think that that kind of nuancing is really, it's really important to have. And then, so how about this constant challenge that you have as, as a composer? And I know this because I speak to so many of your contemporaries and colleagues who all feel pretty much the same way, that you don't wanna to be too invasive um, you want to be able to subliminally affect the audience's experience. But then, of course, you have those moments where the score really shines, where you're allowed to come to the fore. And so how is that balance for you? Do you find that challenging, something that you enjoy? Talk us through that balance. Well, you know, I've always looked at music. Uh, music is conversation. So I look at it as a sonic conversation, just as when you're talking, there are times when there's a more intense or the inflections are more noticeable. And then there's times of silence and it's a back and forth exchange. So with those moments where the balance needs to be more pronounced, you know, it's something that I try to intuitively tap into. And also, you know, typically I have a, an in-depth conversation with the creative team, the director and the producers about what they're wanting. And I think, you know, I really like to leave enough room for the audience to be invested on their own, their own emotional sensibility is really important for me to, to, to cultivate and to free up, the, free up some space for that. But there are times when indeed the music can take that, that forefront or that foreground kind of approach. Yeah. In this series, the team does such an incredible job of immersing us in the look and feel of 1950s yeah. Mississippi. Yeah. Um, I was immediately transported from the moment it, it opened on episode one. So what was your brief uh, as composer to support and build on the creative vision and give the sense of time and place with a level of authenticity? Well, again, you know, music is conversation. So that particular location, that region, and that time in which this occurred was part of a menu of sounds and textures that I invested myself in, you know, a lot, a lot of listening, but also just, um, you know, 
the importance of honoring the instrumentation and also even the foley and the sound effects of being in the country. What, what does that feel like? You know, um, for me, that kind of integrity is really important. And so I just allow, I love, it's really important to be present, you know, when you're writing music. And I, I personally don't overthink a lot of my scoring because it, it literally comes through so quickly. It, it's, it is conversation. So if I'm looking at, for instance, that, that footage where, you know, Emmett initially, or, you know, his first arrival at Moses' uh, house and, and the cotton fields and everything, that was so powerful. His embrace of a sense of freedom and just the expanse of, of the cotton fields and the farmland. So how to capture that uh, musically was really important to me and I had a great time doing it. Yeah, um, I got the sense when listening to your score after seeing the series, so I had already experienced the sonic uh, landscape of the series and then I listened to your score again without the benefit of the visuals. I felt to me, a lot of that was felt to me really instinctual on your heart. And I just, just wondering, let's, let's take a deep dive into some of the tracks. So there's a track called Take This Public mm -hmm. and, and I just love how you layer that cello sound and please correct me if I'm wrong on the instrumentation <laughs> but from my lay person's ears I felt like there's the cellos there's a light percussion and then this wall of strings mm -hmm. overlaid mm -hmm. and of course that elicits so much empathy and resolve uh, and emotion you also do that in another track called do our part um yeah what is it about the strings that pardon the pun or maybe not tug at the heartstrings so effectively? Well, I think part of it is that the strings are like the voice. They're, they, they have something that's communicative as, as listening to a person speak or sing. And, and there's a, a very strong relation, relationship, like you could, it resonates with you. When you hear somebody singing or you hear somebody speaking and that tone, the, the initial impact it has on you is very, very powerful. So if you think about stringed instruments, they have the ability to go in and out of different microtones, different types of uh, dynamics. They can be very soft, they can be very loud. It's very similar to the voice. So it's, it, to me, it's like a singable instrument. And I think that's one reason why it resonates so easily with people. It's a rich and warm texture on the one hand, and then on the other hand, it can do percussive types of um, articulation. So I think mm -hmm. that's one of the, some of the reasons. It's no wonder that every score I, see, I tend to gravitate towards is so string heavy because it just <laughs> does something. Like you can have choruses and choirs in your scores as well, of course, and that would elicit a different type of emotion, but strings just do it for me. Like cellos, oh, yeah. violas, violins, <laughs> just beautiful. Yeah. Um, I'll stop now. Um, oh, no, good. So I love it. I love I it. I think, you know, and here's another a great element of your score, and that's um, in tracks like Fighting Back and The Crowds Grow and What Mamie Did, you've got this just sensational rolling piano melody overlaid again with the string element just to really hit home what we're, what we're experiencing. What do you most value about incorporating piano melodies in your scores? Because it, you tend to use piano a lot, which of course is, is such a staple in film and TV scores. <clears throat> Um, thank you for that. I mean, it, it, it's actually at times it's a choice that the creative team makes as well. It's the, a choice that, you know, um, this film had some great guidance from the director and the editors and everybody was quite specific with what they wanted to use in terms of instrumentation and intention. So the piano is it's my instrument. I'm also a singer. But the piano for me is, it's like, you know, it's like, like water, you know, I just swim in it. And so um, I find the piano, sometimes I've worked on projects where there's a, a mis, there, there's a misunderstanding about what the piano can do. I, I mean, I've had directors tell me absolutely, you know, we do not want piano. I don't want it to be too overstated with piano because I think 
they it is such a vibrant instrument. It, it, it does take up a lot of room sonically, but then again, it doesn't. It depends on how you use it. You can use it sparsely and you can use it full on. So for me, uh, a lot of the guidance I was given on some of these cues was piano centric. Wow. Um, and then of course you get tracks like Arrest Mom and Bryant or Free These Men, plucky mm -hmm. drawn out acoustic guitar Mm. from my experience evocative of the deep south and then it's overrun by these higher pitched now i think they're horns and ambient sounds talk me through the the tracks where you really lean into the time and place that we're in when we're watching a show yeah so i was again the guidance was to when appropriate use the regional instruments and so I used banjo and guitar and dobro and did some slide, you know, slide guitar, but mainly I just really wanted to create a, a sound that was regional specific without it being cliched. And then the scene moves to a more emotional statement of the tension that was happening after they were arrested. And so that's when I overlaid it with those ambient tones. And, and the horns, yes, you were right. Very good. Oh, phew, thank gosh. Because I always <laughs> worry that I'm going to say the wrong instrument. But it's, I mean, it, I mean, it's probably helpful for you to hear this feedback from someone who isn't musically trained and it's just from the, the naked ear. And that's what oh, yeah. we're experiencing. It's such an immersive, those tracks in particular are really immersive. They're they're muscular and there's a lot of bass sound and then you just hit us at the top end. It's really, <laughs> really effective. I, I, I hope people, like everyone gets a chance to listen to this score because it's really, really innovative. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I really believe that. You know, there's, um, this is a question that I sometimes want to ask and it's, you know, it's touch and go, but, but I'll ask it anyway. <laughs> Women composers are, are really, they finally been given more opportunities in high profile projects, right? Like for example, Hilda Gunadotto just won the Oscar a few years ago for Joe Carr. And there's others like Ronit Kirchman and Ruth Barrett, and they're doing such great work at the moment. Does that inspire you? And also, do you look forward to the day when we wouldn't even use this as a talking point? <laughs> yes and yes. Um, yes and yes to both of those. Uh, I'm inspired that the playing field has become more open and that people are, you know, they're, they're about the work and the craft and not necessarily um, seeing it that it has to be something so gender specific. I do think that there is an imbalance uh, that has for many, many decades kept women out of that type of um, capacity to score major you know, studio films and TV and, um, and even video games. But I think to your point, it's all changing now. And I think that um, for me, I, you know, it's about the work in, in, in the sense that I, I mean, music is such an intrinsic part of who I am. I mean, I, my mother was teaching piano when she went into labor with me. So I, and so I come by it honestly, you know what I mean? I, yeah, I don't- You had no choice. That yeah, I really, I really didn't, I still don't. And so for me, it's about honoring that kind of DNA and that kind of um, gift. And I think when we can get to a point where we stop this onslaught of conversation that is all about constructs, whether it's pigment, whether it's gender, whether it's age, whatever it is, it's, I'm not being dismissive of the need to have the conversation and the need to create, correct the imbalance that these constructed types of dynamics and unfortunate realities have put upon us. But I think for me, it's always been about the work and the gift of having this uh, an ability to write and create music. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know why it's taken so long. I really don't because women have been so uh, critical to um, music over the last 50, 100 years. And the boys club, I think, has finally just realised, well, I don't think we have a choice now. We have, to, we have to let these wonderful composers in 
and uh, we end up being the ones who win at the end of the day. Um, I have a, just a really general question for you, um, Catherine, and that is, is there a score that you love, that you listen to a lot, that inspired you as you developed as a composer? Like what, because I, I, I can always name my favourite scores, but I'd love to hear from someone like yourself. What's your favourite score? Oh, my goodness. I cannot answer that question. <laughs> what are you talking about, my favourite score? I cannot <laughs> single out at one <laughs> score all I right mean... <laughs> send me an email later because i really want to know the top 10 at least all right i will do that <laughs> if i can think of it you're you so gotta think yeah that's fair enough you know um you have submitted episode six of the series this is my final question so really important um everybody submits an episode when it comes to any consideration, which is going to happen in the next few weeks. And, um, you know, we, we all hope that our content and our work is recognized. You submitted episode six. Uh, of course, that is the most rousing, emotionally satisfying. It's just, a, it's, it's really the pinnacle of the whole series. Is that the reason why you decided that was the one to go with? Or was there something else that drew you to that particular episode? No, absolutely. I mean, you hit the nail on the head. I think that particular episode, it, it culminates all of the dynamics uh, of this particular uh, event and, and the way in which the emotional arc of the series lands, the six, episode really it sort of recapitulates all of that and so that's why I chose it well good luck and I hope to see you on the Emmy red carpet in a few uh, months time and in the meantime congrats on some beautiful work on Women of the Movement thank you so much and thank you again for having me I really appreciate it mm -hmm.